We we enter on verse number uh, twenty. So we'll continue from the Bismillah Taala. I'll just read a couple of verses and then we will continue Bismillah Taala. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "Bad Aldi Billahi Min Al Shaitan Al Rajim." Aldi Billahi Min Al Shaitan Al Rajim. Bismillah Al Rahman Al Rahim. إن المتقين في جنات ونعيم فاكهين بما آتاهم ربهم ووقاهم ربهم عذاب الجحيم قلوا واشربوا هنيئا بما كنتم تعملون متكئين على سرر مصفوفة وزوجناهم بحور عين والذين آمنوا واتبعتهم ذريتهم إيمان ألحقنا بهم ذريتهم ألحقنا بهم ذريتهم وما ألتناهم من عملهم من شيء كل امرئ بما كسب رهين in the surah after allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, spoke about a revelation and indicated to that via the oaths at the beginning of the surah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then went on to speak about those who deny the message and their punishment that they will meet in the uh, in the year after thereafter allah subhanahu wa ta'ala balanced that out by speaking about the the muttaqin um the other end of the spectrum and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, described the pleasures that they will find themselves in right and that's what we uh, we dealt with from last week allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said indeed the muttaqin the god conscious people the god fearing people they will be in gardens and in bliss fakihina bima ataahum rabbuhum they will be rejoicing or enjoying that which their lord given them وَوَقَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ عَذَابَ الْجَحِيمِ and the Lord will have or the Lord will protect them from the blazing or the punishment of the blazing fire قُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا هَنِيًّا بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ it will be said to them eat and drink uh, freely بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ because of what you used to do مُتَّكِئِينَ عَلَى سُرُورٍ مَصْفُوفَةٍ they will be reclining upon uh, upon Beds in a rose, and we will uh, marry them to Hurin Ain to Hurin Ain. Hurin. That doesn't really have a direct translation, it needs more of a uh, description. Females whose, whose eyes will, the dark of it will be dark and the, the white of it will be white uh, and they will be wide-eyed some of us say in relation to this verse that um, that the 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 word zawajna zawajna doesn't actually mean to marry uh, doesn't actually mean to marry like we use the word um, it's also the same form of the word wow uh, jim on the second verb, zawwaja yuzawwaju means to marry one person off to another. But it can also mean to make somebody a zawj. Like a zawj means a, a partner. Um, a zawj means a partner, to make somebody a partner. So uh, what it can also mean is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will partner them up or pair them up with um, spouses. And some of us um, say that, uh, that Ibn Ashur rahimahullah ta'ala mentions that... Um, that this refers to the fact that you know if they had pious spouses in this world then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will partner them up with these spouses and vice versa for the females as well um i hope that doesn't make the brothers want channel any less may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our spouses all pleasing to us i mean and obviously there are other there are other tafasir for it as well but in between so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then takes a pause. Right? If you look at verse number 20, Allah is speaking about the condition of the muttaqeen in Jannah. Right? And we said 
that's indicated by the fact that the verse starts with um, a word in nasb that's showing their hal, right? And then in verse number 22, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes, carries on speaking about that. He speaks about what he's going to be doing to the people in Jannah and what their condition will be. In 23, that verb at the beginning is also showing the condition. But this verse number 21, it's like an insertion into this list of conditions of the uh, of the uh, people of Jannah in Jannah, the muttaqin in Jannah. Um, but I think, you know, it, it almost comes smack bang in the middle of these descriptions of the people of Jannah in Jannah. And I think, uh, you know, in reading or in going through the meaning of the verse, you will understand why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inserts it in there. It's not actually speaking about the muttaqin in Jannah. But speaking about the progeny, because um, I think for many people, the condition of the children is something that's of, 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 of you know, utmost importance to them. Um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like, we are not just people that are concerned solely with ourselves. As a Muslim, um, as somebody that, that, that has a view of what is good and beneficial, that... Uh, goes beyond material wellness that goes beyond just um you know having enough of this dunya and recognize that actually the the wellness that is uh, that is not material is actually far superior and more important than material wellness right um, one of my greatest concerns and the greatest concerns of, of, of as that mindset is, you know, that, oh Allah, make my children also enter Jannah with me. And, and, and why that's the case? Because it's like part of K. It's part of K and love that you do not want harm to come to the next person. Especially you don't want harm to come to your children. But there's some kinds of harm that you don't have any control over. That's dependent on their actions. Now you can guide them. You can teach them. You can inculcate good habits in them. But you can't choose for them. You cannot choose for your children. That's a very, very, you know. As I sound. Yeah, we don't hear it. That's a very difficult thing to, uh, to sometimes stomach. I think any person that has cared for another person, and that has this worldview of, of the, you know, that that attaining the pleasure of Allah, that is goodness, that's happiness, that is success, that is what's going to benefit you. Um, and the absence of that is is is, is utter uh, destruction and, and and harm. Then you will, you know, I, I'm sure you would have experienced that. That sometimes you think to yourself, you know, how I wish I could just make that person's choices. When you see somebody making the wrong choices, when you see somebody doing things that will be displeasing to Allah, when you see somebody doing things that will be uh, harmful for the even for the for the dunya, we sometimes feel like that on account of key. How I just wish that I could make choices for that person. How I wish that, um, you know, I could be put into their body and just, you know, force their life in a certain direction for a moment. But unfortunately, that's not possible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave every human being free will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave every human being the ability to make their own choices. And one person can only benefit another person by, you know, calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them. And by making irshad, by, by, by indicating to them what the correct thing is, by speaking to them about it, by expressing your love for them, by uh, you know, showing the, the fact that you have the goodwill at heart through your own actions. But you're still concerned over the fact that you, know, you want success for them, you want goodness for them. <laughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almost like allays those fears for the people of Jannah. And he says, وَالَّذِينَ amanu." And those who, who believed. The verb we have here is يَتَّبِعُ on, uh, on, on which verb is this? I'm seeing if people are here with me. Second 
تابع it's on the on the eighth bar. But it's like more for that now, and at least other people are participating. Um, it tabah how, how I know that this is not on the second bab and that it's on the eighth bab. Whenever you have, you see the root letters are. Let me get my pen. If you see my root letters are ta, ba, and ain. If the shadda is only on the first root letter, that's number one, that's number two, that's number three. If my shadda is only on my first root letter, and I can see all three of my root letters distinctly, then I know it must be on the eighth bar, but it's a modification on the eighth bar. The eighth bar is supposed to be if ta'ala. If ta'ala, but now, if the first root letter is a ta, then I'm going to have it look like this. We cannot see your writing, Molina. You can't see my writing. No. Uh, okay, I can see the writing. Molina, I can see the writing, Molina. Okay, I'm sure it will show up in a moment, inshallah, uh, for those that uh, couldn't see it. What, what we have here is we have two tas next to each other. One has a sukun, one has a shadda. When you have two of the same root letter next to each other, another way of writing it would be to just assimilate it once, or to assimilate them, shove them into each other, and put the shadda on them. So you have itta, ba'a. And generally, when you have a shadda only on the first root letter, you can you just remember that almost as a kind of a rule. When you have only a shadow on the first root letter, but you can see all of the root letters distinctly, then it means it's on the eighth bab. If I have a shadow on the first root letter and the second root letter, then I know it's on the fifth bab. If I, it's a modification of the fifth bab. If I have a shadow on the second root letter only, then I know it's, a, it's on the second bab. Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? Ittaba. Ittaba comes from the root letter. Root letters ta ba ain. You know from the tabi'a yatba'u to to follow. <laughs> to follow, right? Um, this form of the word ittaba yatba'u. It's on the eighth bab and it just has a more reflexive meaning. They themselves follow. Uh, themselves they followed. But who is the fa'il of ittaba'a? Ittaba'at actually. We have the feminine form. The fa'il of it, ittaba'at, is dhurriyatun, dhurriyatuhum. We can see that this is a feminine word. It has a tamar buta. Dhurriyatun. What does dhurriyatun mean? Dhurriyatun means progeny, offspring. Your children, their children, their children. Um, that's what Zuriya means. So this word here is the fa'al. If we go through the process of uh, Ali or Eli, whichever one you use, you first look on the end, what taba'at. We can see there's nothing on the end. This is a standard feminine form because it ends with a ta with a sukun. So if there's nothing at the end or nothing on it, then we look to the left. What's on the left? This word Zuriyatu. Is it in a rough? Yes, it is in a rough. So we know that that's the fa'il. Uh, but it also has a mudafun ilayah attached to it. Zurriyatum, their progeny. So, and their progeny followed them. Who is the thems referring to? Them, them. Alladheena amanu. So, walladheena amanu. Wattaba'athum zurriyatuhum. And those who believed and their progenies followed them be imanin. Their progenies followed them with what? Be imanin. They didn't just follow them. <clears throat> it's not speaking about 
this this uh, phrase here, be man is clarifying what they followed them in what they followed them with right they did it's not speaking about the physical following it's speaking about one generation succeeding another generation with what with belief so um alhamdulillah or maybe the the generation before us they believed right and we are the dhurriya we also have iman so we followed them in in iman now there's a uh, you know there's 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 something beautiful in this uh, in this verse here or uh, i don't know if it's beautiful but it's it's, it's something that incites responsibility right allah is saying those who believe and their progeny follow them with iman there's something there's something implied in me there's something implied in me in that the successive generations will follow you right and and that following is is it's like it indicates that by your demonstration of iman they will then take up the same actions of iman or they will by your demonstrating that belief of yours they will also internalize that belief and so there's an indication in this verse that they followed you by your guidance you guided them towards uh towards iman right and that's a responsibility for every generation towards the next generation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, guide us. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَتْهُمْ And those who believed and the progeny followed them with belief. What does Allah say about them? أَلْحَقَنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَتَهُمْ أَلْحَقَنَا بِهِمْ We have a verb here. أَلْحَقَ يُلْحِقُ أَلْحَقَ يُلْحِقُ Which verb is that on? Bab four. Bab four, correct. The root letters are lahiqa. When I say uh, lahiqa, it means to reach something. Right? Alhaqa means to cause something to reach or to join two things. Uh, that's why we always say in other words, Allahumma alhiqna bi salihin. You know, unite us with or join us with the, the pious. So Allah says, yeah, alhaqna. The file of this verb is na. You can see. Al-Haqa, if you go down the scale, Al-Haqa, Al-Haqu, Al-Haqat, Al-Haqa, or Al-Haq, Al-Haqata, Al-Haqna. Um, and if you carry on, you'll eventually get to Al-Haqna. The file of it is this na. Al-Haqa means to cause two things to join, or to unite two things, or to join, uh, to make things meet up. So what does Allah say? Al-Haqna. We will cause to join, be him, with them, them still referring to those who believe, we will cause to be united with them, to join up with them. Who will we cause to join with them? Uh, we will cause to join with them or to meet up with them. You can see it's in Nasb. You can see it's in Nasb. So yeah, it is the Maf'ul. We will cause the progeny to meet up with them, to join up with them. Now, there's something interesting here. Again, Allah repeats this word, Dhurriya. Allah could have phrased this in a way where He just says, uh, we would have joined them up with Him. Because He already referenced, if there's only two thems that's being used, um, uh, then the one has to refer to al Amanu, and the other one has to refer to Dhurriyatahum. Uh, and that will be understood. But Allah repeats this word, Dhurriya. Right? Um, there's actually books written on the benefits of of, uh, of of this verse and this idea that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he will make one's progeny with the condition that they follow you in belief, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them meet up with you uh, and that would allay a lot of fears for, for parents because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he will make your progeny meet up with you in Jannah what that means is even if they don't necessarily fulfill the same degree of good deeds as you they will not be placed into uh, a lower rank in heaven such that you cannot meet up with him. In fact, this meaning came through in another situation where um, one Sahabi by the name of Thawban radiallahu anhu. Uh, you know, Thawban radiallahu anhu, he was a, a maula of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like a, a freed slave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he 
he intensely loved Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Um, so one day, Thawban uh, radiyallahu anhu, um, you know, he, he stayed away from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam for a number of days or for a while, um, and then eventually Rasulullah called for him, and then Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw that his color was like pale, etc., um, and he looked like somebody that was sick, and Rasulullah sallam then inquired from him, so you know, what has put you into the state? And he said, you know, he's not sick, but it's the the fact that he worries, that he worries that, um, you know, that he won't get to Jannah. And if he doesn't get to Jannah, then he'll be deprived from seeing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And even if he gets to Jannah, then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be in the high ranks of Jannah, and he will be in the low ranks of Jannah, and so he'll still be deprived. And so this is grieving him and worrying. Subhanallah, imagine the concern of the Sahaba. He had these thoughts to the extent that, he, that his color changed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, revealed the verse of the Quran where he says, Those that believe in, uh, wa oh, how does the verse go? Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala li Sayyidina Muhammad wa sallam. Uh, Shuhaydan wa sallam. Let me just check the verse clear. Ah, wa may yuta'i Allah wa rasoolahum Whoever obeys Allah and his messenger, فَأُولَيْكَ سَوْذَوْزُ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ They will be with those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had favored upon مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ from the prophets والصديقين and the, uh, and the, the, the you know, the, the, steadfast, the ones who were certain and steadfast in the affirmation of truth and in their belief. Um, وَالشُّهَدَاء and the the martyrs was salihin and the pious wa hasuna ulaika rafiqa and uh, you know how excellent are those as companions and so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know in that incident in that incident allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave glad tidings for something and there's another there's a number of ahadith like that where allah where rasulullah told the people al mar'u ma'a man ahab a person will be with the one he loves um that we that we understand that on account of you know, one group's love for another group. Which surah and verse? Uh, that was that verse in Surah Nisa. Let me just see if I can find it. Uh, surah Nisa. Surah, surah Nisa, verse number 69. Um, but anyways, there's a number of other ahadith that allude to the same thing. The point that I wanted to make is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us here that uh, on account of you know, on, by virtue of one group's love and care for another group, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause them to be united in Jannah. Yes, with the condition that both of the groups have belief. That both of the groups have belief. But on account of the, the love and care for one another, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause them to be united in Jannah. And I think, you know, subhanAllah, to me, that is like uh, one of the greatest glad tidings that can ever possibly ever be mentioned because subhanallah like um, you know we all love the pious we love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam we love our parents we love uh, you know those people that have outstripped us by far in good deeds um, how will we ever reach their ranks so you know one of the ways is to be sincere in our love for them. And that's why when the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum heard these things, they rejoiced like they never rejoiced before. Because, you know, if they were certain of one thing, they were certain that they loved Rasulullah They, you know, they, they would doubt whether their actions would be enough, etc. But they would never doubt their love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us uh, truth and uh, sincerity in our Love for Rasulullah and for the pious and for our parents and for those who preceded us with belief.
So Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَتُهُمْ بِإِيمَانٍ أَلْحَقْنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَتَهُمْ And those who believed and their progeny followed them with belief, we will cause them to be joined with their progeny. وَمَا أَلَتْنَاهُمْ مِنْ عَمَلِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ And we will not أَلَتْنَاهُمْ um, we will not deprive them. We will not deprive them. Again, the na is the uh, the fa'il. This verb here has a uh, um, it has a weak letter in it. Right? Wa ma alat nahum. We will not deprive them. Just uh, try to find something. وَمَا أَلَتْنَاهُمْ We will not deprive them مِنْ عَمَلِهِمْ From their deeds, from their actions, مِنْ شَيْءٍ at all. Meaning they will, the first group of believers, the, the ones who preceded them with belief, they will have the full measure of their of the good deeds. And so we understand from this that if one group, two groups love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they care for each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or one group precedes another group with belief, right? And they have that long, the, the desire for them to be united with one another. It's not that Allah will take the ones that are in a higher rank in Jannah and place them with the lower ones. Uh, according to the, you know, the lowest common denominator, no. Allah says that he will not deprive any of the, uh, of the benefit of their deeds. And thus, you know, we could understand from that that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take those in the lower ranks and join them uh, with those in the higher ranks. Allah, and, and that is befitting for Allah, the one who is most generous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَلَتْنَاهُمْ We will not deprive them مِنْ عَمَلِهِمْ From their deeds مِنْ شَيْءٍ at all. كُلُّ مْرِئٍ كُلُّ مْرِئٍ But at the same time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُلُّ Every إِمْرِئٍ إِمْرِئٍ means a man. Uh, this word, it's a, it's a funny word. When it's in nasb, then it's Imru'un. Oh, sorry. When it's in Raf, it's Imru'un. When it's in Nasb, it's Imra'an. When it's in Jar, it's Imri'in. Um, but it means a, a man or a person. Kullu Imri'in. Every person, Bima Kasaba. Bima Kasaba. For what he has earned, Rahinun. He is a, a mortgage. Uh, he's a surety. So, what does that mean? The, the, the verse is actually, the mubtala is kullumri'in, and the khabar is rahinun. Kullumri'in, rahinun. Every person is a mortgage for what? What is he standing surety for? What is he a mortgage for? What is he, it's, you know, how does it work when something is mortgage? I leave something by another person um, until, you know, I pay them back whatever it is that needs to get paid, and then the mortgage comes back to me. So Allah is the thing that was mortgage. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Every person, you know, is standing surety for what he has earned. So it's as if, as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, you know, your life is on the line. Once you do your good deeds and you can present that in the akhirah, you know, then you will set yourself, uh, you will set yourself free by that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our deeds sufficient to, uh, to set ourselves free. Our time is actually up now. Um, please forgive me for the delay at the beginning. I, I was having some real trouble getting my camera to work. Um, I, I think it's because I installed a new antivirus program. It was interfering with things. But um, inshallah, we will continue next week. If you have any questions, we can uh, we can take them and discuss the verse uh, more in detail next week, inshallah, and continue from there. I think Mala Muhammad is already with us. So I will hand over to him now. Alright, assalamu alaikum.